Christ among us. Amen. Without further ado, Dr. Daryl Jackson is coming with our order of service. Won't you stand as the men of God come? Amen. 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 Giving God the highest of all praises. The scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thy feet shall stand within thy gates. O Jerusalem, today, be with them as well. Have your way in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus to Christ. We do pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Now, now, what we're going to have, we'll find a service. Our scripture reading will be read by Dr. Percent. And after the scripture reading, we will have our prayer by Dr. Percent as well. And then after Dr. Percent get through with the, the prayer, next we will have, this is the first Sunday of the month, and there's somebody in this month of November that has a birthday in this month. So after that prayer, we're going to lift those birthday babies up. You may be a little old babies, but the birthday baby is up and give you that song of uh, happy birthday. Good morning. God is a good God. Amen. The old songwriter says, and worthy to be praised. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our scripture today will come from the Gospel of John and the 11th chapter, beginning with the first verse. John 11, beginning with the first verse, according to the King James. It says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still the same place in the same place where he was the word of God for the people of God you may be seated this is really a time for prayer I don't know about your household but my household is in flux because my wife is ill I'm sure that that same illness is following everybody around. And we try to put the best face forward, but when somebody's ill in your house, you ain't quite right. But I'm so glad that God said he is the arbiter. He is the great physician, never lost a case. And we come now just to bow our heads and says, now, O oh great Father God, it's again and another time that your humble servants have gathered before you. Not for fame or fortune or outside show, but we came because you said you would always meet us here. I don't care what the situation, you would always, wars and rumors of war, sickness, death, you would always meet us here. We came just to see your face one more time and bow before you and thank you for what you've already done. 
For I don't know about anybody else, but you brought me from a mighty long ways. Hallelujah. Did not know I would come this far, but you brought me. Things were not always the greatest, but you carried me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for carrying me. And all of my brothers and my sisters, I'm sure the story is the same. For you brought us and allowed us to come before you another Sunday. Lord, we just say thank you. We don't know how we made it, but you brought us. And Lord, we just say thank you. Because you've been good to us. And our forefathers said better than we have been to ourselves. Lord, we came today to praise you, to lift you up, to magnify your name. Because of your graciousness, because of your goodness. It's only in doing that we show obedience. And Lord, here we are. Use us in a mighty way in the name of Jesus. Start with the choir. Continue, hallelujah, to the ushers. Continue to the greeters. Continue to security. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. This is our prayer. In Christ's name, amen.
somebody wants to know and there's something in this word that's going to answer your question and so I am just thankful that God decided to use me to bring this wonderful word to you today but we are so happy and pleased to be here and it's so good to see all of you out this morning and to this choir that's been doing such a wonderful job thank God for them Amen, amen. But there is a word coming out of the book of John, the 11th chapter, at that third verse. John, the 11th chapter, at the third verse. And it says, Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. In other words, they were saying in so many words, Jesus come. They, they wanted him to come right now. R right now, Lord, we want you here right now. And I'm going to use for a subject of a thought. He may not come. <laughs> when you called him. How many know that? He may not come when you called him, but how many know he's always, always, always on time? I mean, do I have any witnesses in the house? But there, there may be some people in the house that really may not know why my prayers are not being answered. I, I've been praying, but I, I can't seem to get nowhere. Don't, doesn't seem like the Lord is answering my prayers. What's taking my prayers so long to get answered? You know, you know, you know, you know, sometimes we get impatient. Anybody ever prayed for something and didn't get it? And, and, and you wonder why you, you didn't get it? And you, you in love, you say, well, how, Lord, I, I, I need this prayer. But, but the Lord didn't give it to you. And many times we, we become impatient, get upset, get frustrated, because my prayers are not being answered. You're saying, Lord, I needed a financial blessing last week. It hadn't showed up yet. Lord, don't you hear my prayers? God, Father, we have a family dispute that's going on in the family. And Lord, I need you right now. But you're not showing up. And then on my job, Lord, on my job, I'm praying for a promotion. And you didn't even have me in the starting lineup. Lord, where are you? I mean, what's, what's going on? You say you would never leave me, not forsake me, and you'll be with me always, even to the end of the Lord, where are you? Do I have any? Now, I know these would be some young Christian, young believers that, that haven't been praying long enough to know sometimes your prayers doesn't always come when you think they ought to come. <laughs> Am I right about that? It's not that God does not hear your prayers. He hears your prayers. I know I was, I was talking with a preacher some while back and, and he was saying that the Lord does not hear a sinner's prayer. And we had some questions back and forth. 
because I hadn't always been in church all my life, and I say, well, he had to heard mine because he changed my heart, changed me around. Am I, and, I, and I was like Paul. I, I was a sinner. Yeah, I was a sinner. Yeah, mm, sure was. And, and see a mess up sometimes. Keep me in your prayers. And don't look at me funny. You do too. So we need to pray for all of us. He may not come when you call him, but he's always on time. In, 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 in other words, in other words, whenever God promised a blessing or a curse, you can rest assured that it's, it's on the way. It's coming. But, but it's, it's coming not on your timetable, but it's coming on the timetable of God. You know, the scriptures say in the fullness of time, God shows up. In other words, he brings on blessings when everything is right. And, and, and there is an old proverb uh, among the African American saying that he may not come when you call him, but he's always on time and in time. That's the God we serve. And that's what happened with uh, Mary and Martha. Because they sent word for Jesus to come. And because and their brother was sick. And they wanted Jesus to get there before he died. And this was serious. This is the point of death. But that still doesn't mean nothing in God's timetable. Am I right about that? See, see, God, death doesn't bother God. I mean, death can't hurry God. God can turn death around. God is never too late. He's always on time and in time. But Mary and Martha didn't understand that. And, and, and Jesus waited. Listen, Jesus waited two more days before he would even show up. But now... Let me tell you, in the New Testament, it talks about different times. It talks about chronos and kairos. Chronos and kairos. Now, when you see the word chronos, it, it talks about the time on the clock on the wall, how that big clock go around chronos. It talks about, that that's what it is. But when you see Carlos, Carlos is a different decisive meaning of time. Carlos talks about the right, help me somebody, the right, the right, help me somebody, the right time. See, see, Kairos is, is, is the appropriate time, the right time. See, every time is not the right time for you to do certain things. Am I right about it? I mean, you can do it right now, but it's, it's not the appropriate time. And, and, and God knows he works all of his timing and his events in the proper place and the proper time. In the fullness of time, when the timing is right, God steps in. And don't think when you pray to God for something, but always remember this. Remember this. Please remember this. Don't be the one that pray, God, I want you here right now, God. I want it right this and this and that. I want it over here. I want this. No, don't pray like that. Pray, God, if it's in your will. Pray if it's in your will. And learn to pray prayers that are in God's will. Incorporate your prayers into the will of God. And when you incorporate your prayers into the will of God, then your prayers are apt to be answered. And, and when I say incorporate it, your prayers into the will of God, incorporate your praying. Say you're praying for your husband. Lord, I want my husband to be a better man. I want him to be a godly man. I want him to be one that would lift you up and bring the children to church. I want him to be a man that will reach out to others and help others to be more godly-like. And you're praying in the will of God. 
You, you're praying for a new house. Lord, I want a new house, God, so I can get some rest and I can be a better servant to you, God, from living in this better house. God, bless me with this house. But whatever you pray, include, include, include God in it for his glory. Don't just want a car just so you can show off. No, God, I want a car so I can be able to come to worship service. I want a car so I can be able to take somebody to the doctor, the hospital. I want to be a car, a car so I can be a blessing to somebody other than me. And when you think of others, not yourself, God is more apt to bless you with it. Always remember to incorporate your prayer into the divine will of God. The will of God. Incorporate your prayers that way. And you'll be surprised how your prayers will get turned around and God will bless them. God will open up doors. But always remember, it's on God's timetable. It's on God's timetable. And he, and he does it in time. And he does it on time. He can do it any time. But he, he do it on his time. And he does it when it's best for you. That you will get the most out of the blessing you're asking for. He knows what you need more so than you know what you need. He'll make a way for you out of no way. And when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick. He knew he was going to die. And he, he knew that I'm going to make sure he's good and dead. Amen. And so won't nobody be no questions. See, it, it was the right place, the right time, so God could display his glory and his power. I mean, he could have healed Lazarus from where he was. He could have just spoke the word. But it, it, was, ooh, it wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time. And now you're saying, Lord, I, I, I want a new job. I want a new car, but it ain't the right time. It ain't the right time. And, and, and you keep looking. You keep trusting God. Keep praying to God. And God will do what needs to be done. And what God did, God took on the Kairos time. He said, I'm going to wait here a little while longer. And so when I get there, there won't be no question who raised him from the dead. And, and so everybody will be able to see. He wanted people to see what he was doing. He wanted the unbelievers to see. He, he wanted to show his power. And that would have been the right time. And when he got there, you know, Martha come running out, kind of mad a little bit, saying, if you had have been here, other way, wanted to question, where were you at any, anyhow? You had have been here. You knew I was calling you. Why didn't you show up? My brother Lazarus would not have died. And, and, and Jesus said, well, he should rise. And Martha said, well, I know he's going to rise in the resurrection. And Jesus looked at it and stand flat-footed and looked at I am the resurrection. <laughs> in other words, in other words, in other words, God was letting her know that he's never too late. He said, where is the cemetery would have got up right there? But he had to call Lazarus in particular to rise. And he came forth with grave clothes on. They say, loosen him and let him, let him go. Now, the same applies to us. That, that when we pray to God, the same power that God did to raise Lazarus from the dead, the same power he can do in our lives to raise us up, turn our lives around, fix issues and problems in our lives. He is our way maker. He is our bridge over troubled water. He is our doctor. He is our lawyer. He is our friend. He, whoa, he is our husband. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever been by yourself sometime and you start talking to the Lord? And, and, and sometimes you get happy all by yourself. 
You don't need no choir. You don't need no band. You don't need nobody but you and Jesus. Because you realize if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't even get up this morning. But I get up this morning. And don't you know, here I get up, and, and, and he's a doctor. Thinking he'd be like, I went up the stairs in the house. I said, what the hip doing? But I went, I looked at God. Won't he do it? How I many won't he do it? I dare you to trust him. You, you know, it doesn't take much for me to get happy when I just start thinking about the goodness of the Lord and what all he has done for me and how he has brought me through. And I know he'll do the same for you. You know, it, it, it's so good to understand God. It's so good to know that he's above and beyond anything we can think or imagine. Do I have any witnesses in the house? And one thing about it, don't rush him. You know, back in the day, old folks say, you can't hurry. <laughs> you can't hurry, God. You, you, you talk to somebody. You, you just got to wait on him. And, and we know when we come to church, we know that we learn that they, the, what, about, what, what does Isaiah tell us? When we learn to be able to be patient, slow down. In other words, slow your roll. Slow down, slow down. Slow your roll, slow your roll. And be able to, 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 to see the forest for the trees. And, and wait on the Lord. I, I can truly say that I've waited on the Lord, and God has been far better to me than I could have been for myself. And if I had gotten the things I wanted when I wanted them, they wouldn't have been no good to me. I'd have messed them up because I didn't know how to use them. But when you wait on the Lord and God give you that understanding, give you that wisdom, then you know how to handle the blessings he got coming your way. Am I right about it? God is wanting to bless all of you. He got blessings in the hem of his garment just for all of us to satisfy the poor, to satisfy the unsaved, to satisfy the unhappy. And you know, once you get God on the inside, this joy that the world give, uh, happiness the world give, see, the world can take it away. But the joy that the Lord give, when you get that joy from God, see, the world can't take it away. When you get that joy from the Lord, you know the world didn't give it to you, and the world can't take it from you because God is a way maker out of no way. God is the joy. God is the wind beneath my wing. God is my morning star. God is the light of my life. God is my way maker when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me and all he's done for me. And I want you to know that you can call him, but he may not come. But don't get delirious because he knows when to come. He's never too late. He's always on time. He's in time. And, and on How many know God can show out? How many know he can show out when he shows up? And how many know God? You might be saying God, God is procrastinating. How many know God does not procrastinate? How many know he does not sleep? He does not slumber. The God we serve does not get tired. He does not get aggravated like me and you. Because if he did, none of us would be here. We all be gone. He's patient. You know, God is slow to anger. And, 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 and he, he waits on us. And, and he, he is there all the time. If God waited until tomorrow to give us a blessing that we need today, our lives would be miserable. He blesses us every day. Can you just say thank you, Lord? Can you just say, praise you, Lord? I mean, those who may be going through, can you just say, thank you, Lord? Even if your bills are behind, can you just say, thank you, Lord? Even if you don't have nothing to drive, can you just say, thank you, Lord? 
Even if your car note is due, can you say, thank you, Lord? Even if you don't have no food in the house, can you just say, thank you, Lord? Because he promised to feed you. He promised to take care of you. He promised to make a way for you. And if you've got the faith in God like you're supposed to have, faith of a mustard seed, a moved mountain, you, if you got the faith, you go on into the house, sit at your kitchen table, put, put, put your diner set, put, put, your, put your plates out there, get, get your cups out there. He promised to feed you. If you got faith in God and don't have no food, somebody will bring some food to your house. He'll do it every time. He may not come when you call him, but he's always on time. And I want us to know that when we are praying, praying for the situation of this country that we live in, the world, and all of the politics. Don't worry about all of that. You do the best you can, but put all your trust and faith in God Almighty. I don't care who, well, I want who need to be in the president, in the, in the president, I want them to be there, but I really don't care who's there. Because all of my hope is gonna be in Christ Jesus. That's what my faith is going to be. I don't care who he put in there. He can put the devil himself in there. But my faith is in Christ Jesus. Because I know whoever's in there, God still have control over it. Keep your faith in God. Won't he make a way? He'll do the undone. He'll come into your life. He, 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 he will bless your family. He'll open up doors that are closing your faith. Finally, my brothers and my sisters, when I consider who God is and how he allows me to drag, allows us to drag, allows us to delay for a while, but when the Lord gets ready, when he gets ready, how many know you got to move? How many know when the Lord gets ready, you got to move? You, you, can, you can procrastinate all you want to, you can slow around all you want to. You can do what God said you to do and you don't do it all you want to. But when God get ready for you to move, you got to move. That's the lesson that Jonah learned. When God got ready, he had to move. You can run, but you can't hide. When the Lord get ready, you got to move. Am I right about that? That's what Pharaoh learned. When, when, when the Lord get ready to, 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 to rescue his people, no matter how big the armies of Egypt may be, but when God get ready, he'll make a way out of no way. He'll drown them all in the sea. Am I right about it? The same way God will do for you and your enemy. Anybody that's aggravating you, getting on your nerves, I want you to take them to the Lord in prayer. Take them to the Lord in prayer that God is a way maker out of no way. And when I think about the goodness of the Lord, I think about how, how, how he looks beyond our fault. And I think about how Saul was. And Saul was one that was so mean and hateful to the church and wanted to destroy the church. And, but God looked beyond Saul's needs and his faults and blessed him with the things that he needed. In, in other words, on the way to the Damascus Road, Damascus Road one day, when the light hit Saul, Saul was Saul, but his name was changed. His name was changed to Paul. Am I right about it? When the Lord get ready, you got to move, and he will make a way out of no way. And when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done, He's Mary's little baby. He's the bright and the morning star. He comes, he comes like a light. He comes like a, like a breath of fresh air. He comes like a new idea. He comes in your life. He'll pick you up. I don't care what you're going through. Don't care what kind of sickness you may have. Don't care what kind of turmoil you got. Don't care how your children are acting. Don't care how your wife is acting. Don't care how your husband is acting. God can come in, pick you up, turn you around, 
make you mm, what he wants you to be. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Do I have a witness in the house? Have you tried him for yourself? Won't he do the undone? Won't he come around and change some stuff? Ain't he all right? Won't he put pep in your step? Won't he make a way? Out of no way. Won't he do these old bodies? Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Where's that pain? God can move pain. He can make things out of no thing. Am I right about it? He's my father. He's my doctor. He's my lawyer. He's my way maker. David, he's the one I call in the wee wee hours of the night. John, when I can't sleep. Sometimes I can't, sometimes I get to a point and I don't know what to pray for. All I can say is Jesus. Jesus. He knows. And Jesus, the Holy Spirit will interject. And he will do what needs to be done. And then about 15 minutes later, the idea come to me. And I say, look at God. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? And you know, you know, I couldn't make it in this world without him. I couldn't get by without him. You know, none of us are perfect. All of us have our different issues. All of us got our different problems. I got mine. You got yours. But we're all trying to make heaven our home. And we all are reaching out to God. And let us learn to love one another with a deep love. The love that Christ shared for all of us. Because no man is an island. You need me just as I need you. We need each other. God made it that way. And I want you to know that when you call the Lord, if he doesn't come right away, remember to pray, Lord, thy will be done. And pray within the Lord's will. When you're praying, include his will in your prayer. Why you want what you want. How is he going to help his will? How is he going to benefit his kingdom? Make sure you include all of that in there. That when you're praying, that you want to build his kingdom up. But you want, you're trying to pray your will, but your will. Because he works within his time frame. And his time frame is the best frame for us too. We just can't see the whole big picture. Like God sits on the bubble and he sees the whole big picture. He knows what's best for everything. We just in one little corner trying to run something. We don't know, we don't know nothing. So we have to trust him and he will do it. Kronos and Kairos, those different times. God works in the Kairos at the right time, the appropriate time. And I want you to know that today is Kairos time. If you have not given your life to Christ, this would be a perfect time for you to come and say, for God I live, for God I die. If you are out there looking today, maybe you've been praying and trying to get something and somehow or another it doesn't seem to come around as fast as you want it. But if you would inject these principles that I just spoke today into your prayer life, you would see how your life can change. But I want you to know that if you want to give your life to Christ, as the words say, him writer say, just as I am, without one plea, just as I am, and you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to give me a call Pastor Jackson, give me a call here at uh, 704-864-6222, extension 208. And we can discuss and I can lead you to Christ. And if you don't have a church home or church family, you want to be a part of this church family, we can 
uh, I can direct you as being a member of this church family here at St. John. And if you call and I'm not there, leave it on my answering machine. And I will definitely, definitely call, call you back. Because I'm under a mandate, a mandate to reach the laws for Christ. It's just good to be in the land of the living. And today being the first, the first of uh, the month, we always have our communion on the first day of the month. And if you're home, and as we get ready for communion, what I want you to do, maybe you don't have any communion cups, but if you would just get you uh, a little milk, a little water, a soda, if you get wine, that's fine too, but just a sip of wine. Get you, get you some, get you some crackers or bread. And what we're going to do, we're going to consecrate that today into the elements of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Because once a month, we have communion and communion with Christ. We, we want to be a part of him. We want to feel him. We want to take his body. So wherever you are, if you're home and you got your glass of water, cup of water, or we pray, God, that you would consecrate the liquid, the water, the milk, the wine, into your blood. And God, we pray you consecrate the bread that we're about to break. That it In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now what Jesus did, he sent two of his disciples into the city. He said, you see a man with a pitcher? Huh? Don't have them yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Who all don't, do, does not have the communion? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dick. I, I, I take it these up here. You can get those back there that don't have any. Huh? Raise your hands, those who don't have any. How many up here? Everybody's got one. And as you take this uh, communion, if you have any meanness or hateness in your heart toward anybody, ask the Lord to forgive you. Because as we partake of this bread and the Lord's blood, we want to be right with the Lord. And the Lord knows. But as you take this today, to have a forgiving heart, a forgiving spirit, and not have that hatred toward nobody at this present time, give it to the Lord in prayer. And what Jesus did, he sent two of his disciples into the city. Say, if you see the, a man with a pitcher of water, Ask him where the guest house or the guest room is. And you go there and prepare for the Passover. And so they did. And when Jesus got there, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body of the New Testament, which was broken for you. And as often as you partake of this bread, do it in remembrance of the pain and suffering I endured for you. You may eat. And 
likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shared for many for the remission of sin. And as often as you partake of this, do it in remembrance of me. Remember how I shed this blood. Remember how I was beating. Remember how those lashes, those whips, cut the skin from my body. Remember me being pierced in the side and shed this blood for you. You may take and drink. And after taking of the Lord's Supper, take it prayerfully, be thankful, be blessed. God never leaves us without a blessing, and he never leaves us alone. When we think we're by ourselves, God is right there with us. And I want you to know that I will see you next week, same time, same place. Just remember, he may not come when you call him, but remember, he's always on time. Now, if you want to give to the church, give to this service today, you might, you might want to give through cash. You can drive up here and drop it off at the church. Uh, you might want to write a uh, a check. You write a check, you mail it to St. John's Missionary Baptist Church, 1282 Bradford Heights Road, Gastonia, North Carolina, 28054. And, and, then, and then if you, you want to give by Giblify, you can. You want to give by PayPal, you can. Gifts, and whatever you give to this church, ask the Lord, Lord, what should I give to your ministry at St. John? And as the Lord direct you, that's what you do. And watch how God will. I love you, but God loves you best.